This is the Honda CRF 300L and in this video I'm going to give it a full review and tell you what I think of it from my perspective. Um, so I'm very excited about this bike, so let's get into it. Now you may have already watched our previous review of this bike, um, but in that video only the old man had actually ridden it. Um, so I wanted to get my hands on it and see what I thought um, from my perspective. Um, so, I mean, first off, look how good this thing looks. It looks awesome. It's a big bike uh, for a 300, so it certainly doesn't look like a small bike. It looks like a proper enduro machine. So, uh, looks-wise, this thing looks fantastic. Okay, let's start by talking about the engine. So it's a single cylinder, liquid cooled uh, engine, four stroke, and this produces 20.1 kilowatts at eight and a half thousand RPM, which roughly translates to 27 horsepower. And while that doesn't sound like a lot on paper, this thing does actually go quite well. Um, and I think that's largely to do with the fact that it's got a very good power to weight ratio with it only weighing 142 kilograms. So it is a light bike um, and it also produces 26.6 newton meters of torque and that's at six and a half thousand RPM. So this thing does pull very nicely. Um, and I don't find myself thinking I wish it had a bit more power. I think for what it is, being a dual sport motor, um, I think it's perfect um, and it does the job very nicely. This particular bike has done just over a thousand miles and I can see that there's a little bit of rust on the exhaust um, here and there, a bit at the back as well. Um, I don't know whether that's a kind of common thing with enduro and this type of bikes um, because I had an enduro bike as my first motorcycle and it had a very similar um, powder coating on the exhaust and that rusted very easily. I had to spray it pretty much every month. Um, so it can be done, you could you know, take a bit off of it and uh, sand it down and respray it and it would look fine, um, but that's a bit annoying. So um, I don't know whether that's just to do with the way this bike has been treated. I don't know who's been riding it and thrashing it, but um, that's something to bear in mind. The bike handles very nicely, going around the corners on the twisty lanes. It's very sure about itself when you know how fast you can go into a corner and it leans over very nicely. Um, so yeah, it's great fun this bike. Um, and it's, as it says, it's a dual sport motorcycle and it's great for everything. So you could commute on this bike, um, you could ride it on the green lanes at the weekend, you could have it as a second bike. Um, it's very versatile. Um, and this is the kind of bike I'd definitely put my money into. I love this sort of thing and this is a very, very well executed bit of machinery. So um, yeah, very happy with the handling as well. Now, when buying a bike like this, um, it's important to get a tracker, in my opinion, because they are popular with thieves. So they do love a dirt bike. Um, so I recommend Sizap. That's what I use personally, and I have done for the last year, and I've been very impressed. It's a small device. It clips onto your battery, um, and it's got a motion sensor. So if your bike gets moved even slightly, you will get an alert through the app, which you can download on Android or iOS. Um, it also monitors your bike's battery level, so if it's going low, it will tell you that you need to put it on charge, which is great, it'll save your backside. Um, it also lets you do group rides, so you can share your ride routes with your friends and plan um, your ride. So that's a nice little feature if all your mates have got one as well. Um, and it also monitors your riding behaviour, so you can see how fast you've been going, and show off to your friends, say, oh, look how fast I went yesterday. 
they don't believe you, you can show them. Uh, just don't show your missus because you'll be on the naughty step and you'll get a good, uh, good telling off. Um, definitely hasn't happened to me. Um, so if you are interested in the SIS app, um, you can head to the link in the description and use our code MDATUM, which is our channel initials, and that will get you an extra 10% off. So don't miss out, head to the description and check it out. Let's talk about the suspension. So um, a lot of you will know if you've been looking at these bikes that uh, the suspension is quite soft. So you've got upside down forks on the front and a pro link um, on the back. And even just doing that, you can see how much it compresses. And if I sit on it, it goes right down. So it is very soft. Um, maybe that's a sign to lose weight or maybe it's just a bit too soft. So you can tighten it uh, with the, adjusting the preload. So um, that's certainly something I would do. And you can also get a different suspension, um, upgrade it and make it a bit stiffer. So I'd probably do that. However, um, with it being this soft, it does go over the bumps really nicely. So if you're going over a speed bump or something, you go over it at 30 miles an hour and it doesn't even feel like it's there. So that is a, a pro of having such soft suspension, uh, but it does compress quite a bit. So um, is it that massive of a deal? Probably not, because you can just tighten it or get it changed. Um, so for me, I'm not really bothered, um, but it makes for a really nice ride because it's so soft going over the bumps. You don't notice some potholes um, on a nice green lane like this. It just soaks everything up. Um, but you do notice maybe at 70 miles an hour plus that it's quite, um, it can be shaky when it's windy. And I think that does also contribute to the suspension as well. Um, so do bear that in mind, but you can get it changed and you can tighten it. So it's not the end of the world. This has got single disc brakes on the front and the rear and you wouldn't need any more than that. Its stopping power is absolutely spot on, so no complaints there. The tyres are very good. You've got a 21 inch on the front and an 18 on the rear and they're good all rounders. So they're good on the grass, slippy grass, um, they're good off road on sort of dust and dirt and mud um, and they are good enough on the road as well. They don't hum, so they are knobbly tyres, um, but even going along at 70 miles an hour, they're not making a load of noise. Um, they're spaced together in the right kind of spacing so that it doesn't do that. Obviously, motocross tyres are a lot more, the, the uh, knobbly bits are a bit further apart, so it hums loads. Um, you don't get that problem with these, so great tyres. The exhaust tone is very subtle, quite quiet, so I would like to change the end can on that and put something a little bit throaty on it, um, get a good sound out of it, uh, but as with any bikes these days, it's got to go through all the emissions and regulations and that means that every bike sounds like a sewing machine. So that is no fault of Honda's, that is just the typical um, legislation that we have to uh, abide by. So I think with a nice aftermarket exhaust, this would sound lovely. The fuel tank on this is 7.8 litres. So um, this being the kind of road going dual sport bike, um, I always thought looking at the pictures that it didn't look very nice having this um, bigger fuel tank compared to the you know hardcore enduro bikes like the CRF um, 250RX for example but actually it does look quite nice. Um, so in the flesh, it looks beautiful. So no complaints there. Um, and miles per gallon, this bike has done, as I say, 1,220 miles, and this is averaging 83.7 miles per gallon. 
So that's a real world average that this bike is getting. That's no um, figures that have been you know, published. This is what this particular bike is doing. And I'm very impressed with that. Um, that's about double what my Harley does. Um, and that'll save you a lot of money on petrol. So if you're looking for a cheap runaround that does everything, this is your answer. This is great. Um, so yeah, that's almost as good as some 125s out there. So, and you're getting a lot more power. Um, so yeah, I'm very impressed with that. are very good actually I can see probably 90 80 to 90 percent of the road behind me so absolutely great mirrors um, they come out they're quite wide so um, perfect and they kind of fit in line with the end of the bars so you're not making the bike any wider which means that you can lane split very easily um, and this bike being very narrow um, makes a perfect bike for that so commuting it ticks all the boxes for me the display it's an LCD uh, display it's very kind of simple, um, but tells you everything you need to know. Um, so no really complaints there. You can obviously flick through miles per gallon and um, you know your average averages, and then you've got your miles, your tripometer, and everything on there. Tells you what gear you're in, tells you your RPMs, the time, um, how much fuel you've got. So everything you need to know is on there. Now, I don't know whether there's still trouble getting these in dealerships. So if you have bought one of these, let me know, because the last time we filmed, people were saying that they just can't get hold of one. Um, and that's proving to be the same for the Rally. So I've been trying to get hold of a Rally version, which has got the screen, I believe. Um, and I just can't get hold of one. They just never, ever have one. So eventually I'll get hold of one of those and compare it. Um, but let me know if you're struggling to get hold of one, if you've bought one and you're waiting ages, let us know in the comments below. Um, really, I don't think this bike needs a screen. Even going along at 70 miles an hour, motorway speeds, you don't feel the wind in your face. And I, th I don't know how it channels it up, but um, I'm not feeling like I'm being blown off the bike. So it's actually very comfortable. So the screen, I wonder, I'd like to ride the rally with the screen and compare the differences, but I don't think it actually really needs it. Um, so again, if you've got the rally, let us know if it makes a difference. It's got a seat height of 880 millimeters, um, and I, I am six foot one, so this is what I look like. Obviously, when you sit on it, it goes down a bit. So, realistically, the seat height when the suspension is compressed is less than that. Um, but you can touch the floor very easily. So, if you are a bit shorter, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, it's a very comfortable riding position. So, my knees are in a nice um, bent position. My arms are nicely stretched out. So, if you are a taller person, you won't have any issues on this bike. It is very comfortable. And I think even if you are a bit shorter, you'll be okay as well. So yeah, no issues there. The CRF 300L comes in at 5,699 pounds in the UK. And I think that's a lot of bike for the money. I've been very impressed with this bike. I think it's a gorgeous looking machine. Um, couldn't fault the styling at all. The forks look really nice and cool. Everything just looks great. Uh, the clutch lever is ever so light, so um, if you've not got very strong hands, you won't have any issues there. Um, so it's just a great bike to ride, very easy, plenty enough power for what it is, um, and it'll do everything. So if you're looking for a commuter, this will do it. If you're looking for something for green lanes, this will do it. If you're looking for just a little bit of fun on the weekend, it's great. So yeah, definitely recommend this bike. Um, so if you're looking at getting one, do it, it's worth it.
you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe for more, plenty to come. Uh, leave a comment below what you think of the 300L. Check out our t-shirt store. And if you want to support us further, you can head to the link in the description to our Buy Me A Coffee site or leave us a super thanks here on YouTube. Um, so thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.